there's still the question what is Mitsubishi actually doing with their advertising and with these promised figures in terms of fuel efficiency, emissions and EV range. Good morning everyone. Freezing cold, 10 degrees only. No, it's not that cold. Okay, I want to do a quick test with the digital thermometer here. So it's 10 degrees inside the vent opening here. And I'm turning on the heating on 22 now on auto. Yeah, heater is kicking in. 4.5 kilowatts. And look at this. Temperature is rising immediately. Immediately. It takes two seconds and there is warm air coming out 17 degrees already and rising fast yeah I can already feel the warm air coming out nice so the conclusion of this is this is definitely a this can only be an air heater a water heater would it would take more time to heat up the water than first and then blow the hot air into the cabin here but this one is basically reacting immediately you turn on the heater and two seconds later you can see the temperature rising because I was wondering I have seen a water cooled a water heater for the PHEV on eBay and I said hmm, that is weird because I always was under assumption this has an electric air heater so this means the Outlander PHEV has two heat exchangers. One is the electric one for the high voltage battery if you drive in pure electric like now. And the other one is the heat exchanger uh, included in integrated in the water circuit of your cooling system or the engine. Okay, I think um, this makes sense. So I was talking to uh, Sebastian last night. We were chatting. And he told me the story so obviously I said how did you find out about this procedure how do you find out and he said just listening to the car making logical sense and then try different things to make this actually happening <laughs> impressive the two one or two people have tried last night immediately and it failed for them so they could not reset the BMU with this procedure it was a bit unclear when to disconnect and when to connect the charger and if the battery should be connected. What the procedure basically does is it, it disconnects the 12 volt battery for several hours. This will completely deplete the energy source for the BMU. It will then because of the poor design of this BMU, it will then forget all the settings. It will reset your charged ampere hours, your age of the battery, and all statistics of the BMU you could read out with a dog. It resets everything. So it's the same as if the dealer presses both reset buttons on the MUD device. It wipes all information in the BMU. So and after a few hours, once this is done, you plug in the charger and nothing will happen because there's no power on the system. It always needs the 12 volt battery to start the car or to start charging. If the 12 volt battery is flat, you can't start the car, you can't start charging. So once you have... Crossing the highway. of trucks here <clears throat> so once you have connected the charger you have to connect the 12 volt battery for a moment and this enables the whole electronic to to fire up again to start and starts the charging process as well and the charger makes this click sound so everything is up and running and then he disconnects the 12 volt battery again 
while the charging is running, the DC-DC converter is active as well. So from the from the drive battery, from the 300 volt battery, there is a converter which converts the voltage down to 12 volt to charge the 12 volt system, the battery and supply all the equipment in your car. So while the charging is in progress, you don't need the 12 volt battery anymore. You can disconnect it again and the charging cycle will still continue because it's self um, it's self-charging, so to speak. It's self-containing. Well, and then you you obviously charge the car fully to um, yeah until the charging stops, and that's it. This should give you the 38 amp hours because the BMU has reset. If this is the case, I don't know. I haven't tried myself, and I probably won't try it myself because. My battery is still good. <laughs> I'm on 38.1. So if I do this reset, it would be on 38. I would lose another 0 0.1. But um, other people have tried and there was a bit of confusion about when to connect the charger and the battery. And So this is basically how it works. I'm not sure if you need to keep the battery disconnected after the charging starts because it should be reset already. Of course, this is just what came out yesterday. Um, we will need some time to get this tested and refined and optimized if the procedure works. I hammered the car, look at this, 12 ampere hours gone. Uh, yesterday we've used only 10 while driving carefully. But it doesn't matter, I don't have any appointments after work. Um, I'll get, I'll probably have to wait until tonight. I need my whiteboard to explain the state of health and range uh, situation again to you uh, okay see you tonight then <laughs> and we still have 22 degrees outside here still 18 kilometers on the gom left 53 percent more than half of the battery left even i had even I had the heating running full blast this morning. Um, I still have so much battery left. It's so warm outside. The battery is the battery is on 23, 24 degrees, so almost optimal temperature. This temperature makes a big difference to the battery range, to the EV range you will get. Unbelievable. Okay, uh, we go to the uh, drawing board. But uh, firstly, I have to clean the car a little bit. Just some minor dirt removal here and there and clean the windows again and the front again from the bugs so this will be my main task until it gets dark and then and then we go to the drawing board Okay, I've prepared my whiteboard now for the little... Um... Okay, I just want to read something to you, um, which has been discussed on the forums at the moment. The BMU's health estimate does directly affect EV range, and therefore fuel efficiency and emissions. The state of health estimate directly modifies the point at which the BMU thinks the battery charge has dropped to a critical level. Therefore, the PHEV ECU fires up the engine earlier than it should, resulting in less EV range. Yeah, so this is being discussed at the moment in the forums and everyone says, yeah, this is true. And I just want to explain actually what happens. So we've got our battery here around 30% bottom buffer and 8.4 kilowatt hours energy left to you. This is the usable capacity of the battery. So now while we are charging this battery, the BMU recognizes that all the cells are at 4.1 volts and stops the charging cycle. So the BMU estimates now the battery is full and from there on it knows it has 8.4 kilowatt hours to use to drive the car until the battery is at this point of charge to start the engine. So this is the BMU this is the BMU estimation. And then at around 30% it starts the engine. 
So, and this is when the BMU knows the battery has a capacity of 100%, which is 40 ampere hours. So, and then after a while, the BMU still charges the battery to 4.1 volts until the charging stops. And of course, because we don't have, we haven't changed the battery, it is still the same capacity, 8.4 kilowatt hours. But now the BMU estimates the state of health of the battery to 70% only. So it always charges to 4.1 volts, but then only goes to 70% before the engine kicks in. This is about 70% of the available capacity only being used by the BMU because of the miscalculation of the software. And of course now you are missing this part here. This part is not being used by the BMU anymore, by the car. And this is missing in your EV range as well as in your charging energy. If you measure the energy going into your battery, you will realize that after a while at 70%, for example, it takes only around 6.5 to 7 kilowatt hours to 7 kilowatt hours to charge to fully charge your car from when it shows empty to fully charge while before it takes about 9 to 10 kilowatt hours to charge so you can see you are charging less energy in the battery and your driving your EV driving range has decreased by about 30% and this is exactly what and this is exactly what we see in all our cars after 1 2 or 3 years the EV range has dropped significantly. And this is something Mitsubishi is not telling us. When we buy the car, it always says the car has 54 kilometers of range and it uses 1.9 liter per 100 kilometers of fuel. That these two figures are changing after one, two, three or four years, Mitsubishi is not telling you that as a customer. Of course, you would expect a certain degradation. The battery does not get better over time. But what we see in all our cars now is super ridiculous. This is, has nothing to do with lithium ion degradation. This is just software related. And this is exactly what we see here. The BMU has just a bad estimation of the available capacity and it it does not learn correctly from the from the charging cycles this is what mitsubishi tells us all the time saying with normal charging so mit, with normal charging they mean with the delivered evse it comes with the car you plug in at home and you charge overnight to fully this should be sufficient to teach the bmu the real state of health of the battery but this is this is not the case as you have seen in many of my videos i when i always say in the morning oh it has overcharged the battery this is of course not true it has not overcharged the battery this is a just an estimation and b it shows it can charge more ampere hours into the battery than the bmu has estimated the capacity of the battery is and it looks like it is pumping more ampere hours into the battery than actually available. But this is only the, the stupid estimation of the BMU, which is not correct. Yeah, well, and uh, the comments on, these, on this um, statement on, on the forum is that everyone is basically agreeing that if the BMU state of health showing in the dog or with a MUD device, it results in loss of EV range and therefore in higher fuel consumption and of course in higher emissions. And Mitsubishi is not telling you that when you buy the car. Okay, this is just to, um, yeah, to, to visualize what this statement is about. Yeah, if you are not in these forums, uh, let me know what you think about this um, statement and uh, leave your comments down below and we can continue discussing it here. Okay guys, so far this update from today, I have now prepared the car, I've washed the windscreen a little bit and the bumper of course, removed all the bugs and cleaned the rims a little bit and vacuumed the floor mats of course. So everything is prepared for tomorrow's open day at the Queensland Transport Museum in Gatton. If you want to come 
uh, don't come anymore because when you see this video this will be after the actual open day so okay i'm uh, excited for tomorrow i'm looking forward to it it will be an exciting day i'll take you and the camera with me of course so you can see what has happened over there and well as always thanks for watching thanks for your support this is andy from unplugged tv australia signing off you stay charged and we will see us again tomorrow for the open day. Uh, this is my tomorrow, not your tomorrow. Okay, see you then. Bye-bye.